السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين so uh, inshallah few more nights to go and this is our chance to make sure that we get as much as possible it's like one of those uh, scenes where I don't know if you've ever seen uh, certain cultures in weddings, some person comes and they throw money up in the air on top of the groom's head. And then the people, uh, the poor people, they come around and they're just trying to grab as much as they can and they're filling up their pockets. So Ramadan is at that stage right now where we need to uh, take advantage of the opportunities, we need to use our time effectively and we need to try to maximize our time. So today I wanna to share a reminder with myself, uh, first and foremost, and all of us, that there are ways to get great amount of reward with not as great an effort if you know what you're doing. And especially if someone is sick, if someone is tired, they have to go to work, they are not able to stay up the night, what is it that can be done in order to get Laylatul Qadr written for you, that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the whole night? So we know two of them we have been mentioning all Ramadan around. That is, what is the number one way, or one way that if you do this, you will get the reward of praying all night uh, in Qiyam. What is, the, what is that way? Isha and Fajr in Jama'ah. Isha and Fajr in Jama'ah. Now let me ask all the brothers here, especially the brothers, which brothers, raise your hand up high, if you come to Isha every night outside of Ramadan. Like you have a goal that you come to Isha every night. Please raise up high. Okay. So what I really wanted to know are those who don't come every night. Right? But if I asked them, they would not raise their hands. So I want to encourage those brothers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in Ramadan to try to come every night for Salat al-Isha. Ramadan is supposed to be training wheels. When Eid comes around, the training wheels come off. Now we're supposed to be able to go on our own and continue the good that we started. So those brothers who are coming every day for Fajr, every day for Isha, make an intention right now that I'm not going to stop when Ramadan ends. I'm going to continue doing this every night. And again, it, it can be this masjid, it can be another masjid, it doesn't make a difference to us. Whatever masjid you go to, make sure that you attend the jama'ah every night, inshallah, Salat al-Isha, and Salat al-Fajr is something that should be easy. Now, what is another way that a person can get the reward of praying the whole night, even though they actually did not pray the whole night? Finish with the imam. Finish with the Imam is something that the Prophet ﷺ told us that whoever prays with an Imam till the Imam finishes, then he is reckoned as having spent a whole night in prayer. So this is something that where we need to kind of fine tune our program here that we have two reciters usually. That in some of the masajid they have you know different formations of it. Some masajid what they do is that when first Imam finishes. Uh, at eight rakat, he also does sal salat al witr at that time. So all of those people who are basically leaving after eight rakat, they are leaving a whole night's reward on the table. If they so these days, uh, Sheikh Hamza is leading ten rakat. So at the very least, just pr stay for another two. Then he finishes. Then you walk away. <coughs> if you're going to be leaving, so have the reward for the whole night written for you. So in by just 10 minutes more, and you would have had so much more, but you walked away, so it's a big loss. So if you are gonna stay, try to do, and try to get the whole night's reward. Now, today I will share with you a few more of these ways, which are simple and easy ways in order to have multi that whole night of reward. So remember we were talking about that maybe a person can come on the Day of Judgment, and when their Laylatul Qadrs are checked, one person has one night of worship which is equal to a thousand months. But what if someone has two nights of worship in the same night by doing this these ways? Or someone has three nights of worship in just one night. So that is three thousand months. 
3,000 months of worship written for them. So there are a few that the Prophet ﷺ told us a few other ways. And so one of these ways is to recite 100 ayat of the Qur'an at night. So even if you are just praying at home, if you just pray two rak'at of your own, and you recite 100 verses of the Qur'an, 100 verses of the Qur'an, very easy. So if you just read the last quarter of the Juz Amma, that is 100 verses. Usually, most people, they know the 10 surahs. If you learn a little bit more, you can learn easily, memorize the last 100 verses of the Qur'an, which is about the last quarter of the 30th Juz. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites 100 ayat of the Qur'an in a night, he will be rewarded as though he has worshipped all night long. All night long. Another easy way, actually, is if you just do the first three surahs of Juz Amma. Amma yatasa'alun, wa nazi'at, and abasa wa tawalla. If you count the verses, it's 100 verses. And it will literally take you there about three or four pages. That's it. And it should not take a person maybe more than 12 minutes or 15 minutes at max. And you know what? If you're praying qiyam at home, if you're praying qiyam by yourself, whether in the masjid or at home, it is actually allowed, not in fard prayers, but in voluntary prayers, you can actually hold your phone and read from that. Or you could have a mushaf and you can read from that. Some of the places, they have a specific stand where you put your Qur'an in front of you, so you don't touch anything. You just turn the page when you make taslim, then you turn the page, then you stand up and you read with your eyes, with your mouth, but you don't use your hands. Your hands are where they are supposed to be. And you can do Qiyamul Layl like that. So if we just do 100 verses every night, again, very short time, the reward is so much that a person will get the reward of praying all night long. Also, um, in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that if someone recited the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah at night, so this is a sunnah that when we go to bed, we recite the last two ayat which begin with Amana Rasulu bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun until the end. He said that they will be sufficient for him. They will be sufficient for him. And some of the scholars, they took the meaning from this, that if he just did this, it is as if he spent the night in Qiyam. Meaning he, the, the, what was due from him has been given by him just reciting these two verses. Another important one, a simple, easy one, is that having good manners, treating people kindly, and <coughs> especially the parking volunteers, right? So the Prophet ﷺ said that by a person's good character, a believer will attain the degree of one who prays during the night and fasts during the day. So this is not specifically for just one night, but meaning a person who always tries to behave their best and being kind and gentle with people around them. So this person can earn the reward, the degree of someone. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, brother. He was coming all the way up here, right? So I'm like, okay, Jazakallah, may Allah reward this brother. So considerate, so thoughtful. MashaAllah. So, a person who has good manners, deals with people in a good way, then this person gets the degree in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like someone who prays all night, every night, and who fasts every day of the year, Meaning person who frequently fasts, one person who does that actually, and another person with good manners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give him the reward for being like this person. Also, uh, one more I'll mention, and maybe we'll save some of the others for another night, which is that how many people know a widow in their community or in their family? How many people know uh, someone who, whose husband has passed away? Okay, how many people here know an orphan? Someone who is a minor child, the definition of an orphan in Islam is a minor child whose father has passed away. Or maybe their mother has passed away. Sometimes they are called double orphans where both of them have passed away. So anybody here know an orphan? Raise your hand. Okay, so the Prophet ﷺ said that one who makes an effort in order to learn 
you know, whatever problem a certain family that doesn't have their father around to help them on a widow or a, or a poor person is like gaining the reward of a mujahid <coughs> in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in one, hadith, one narration, he said he is like the one who constantly stands for prayer without getting tired. Okay, now, who here constantly stands in prayer and does not get tired? No one. We all get tired. And observes fast every day without breaking it, meaning he doesn't miss a single day of fasting. So he says, for you to inquire, to spend some time trying to meet the needs of a widow or an orphan in the community, it is so rewardable that the Prophet ﷺ said, it's like the reward of the person who's praying all night without getting tired and fasting all day, every day, without ever missing a day of fasting. So what are the needs of widows and orphans? What are the needs of widows and orphans? A lot of times we think that it's only about money, but it's not only about money. Think about what you as a husband, as a father, do. what do you do for your kids? You know, to take them out, to, be, to play with them, to make jokes with them, to help them in their homework, all of these sort of things to make sure that they are taking care of themselves, right? So when my, when my kids are growing up, I want to make sure that if they have now reached a certain age, they need to learn certain things about having reached this age. So as a father, I will make sure that I, you know, teach them those things. So who will do that for the orphans? Who will do that for the orphans? Same thing with you know, families of this nature. So for a person to spend time, this is very, very rewardable deeds. A lot of times <coughs> they need money as well, but there are also many cases where it's not the money that they need, but it's actually the company. It's actually the guidance. You know, think about this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant uh, all of the families uh, unity uh, that they are, that, you know, their father, their mother, they reach an age where the children are old enough and mature enough. But you know, one of the things that really happens very commonly is that many of us, we come from cultures where the husband does all the earning and all the spending and manages all the bills, manages all the housework, paperwork, document, everything is only known to the husband. Now sometimes, all of a sudden, husband passes away. Maybe he left a big chunk of money for the wife and the kids, but the wife and the kids, they have never dealt with money because the father was always there taking care of them. So they may not even know how to, for example, pay a simple bill, how to go to a bank account, bank and withdraw money, basic things like that, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken care of these needs through their husband who is not there anymore. So for a person to help them learn these matters, that is actually something that is really, really needed as well for those families. And these are things that we need to pay attention to. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the tawfiq to be from among those who will not miss Laylatul Qadr. We ask Allah to grant us Laylatul Qadr and to grant us forgiveness and freedom from hellfire in this Ramadan before it ends. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers and sisters in Gaza in our brothers and sisters in Sudan, in Yemen, in Afghanistan, and any corner of the world wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is, uh, you know, these people are being tested by Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.